sabbatical center, and we're heading to, I guess you're driving us to Marta? It's the M-A, which is that, what does that stand for? M-A-R-T-A. Seriously. Marta stands for uh, transit system. I'm not going to repeat <laughs> <laughs> because I could be speaking to a Zazak right now. That's right. <laughs> Let's see. Let's okay. see. <laughs> Surely. Wait, what happened in 1995 on the radio? Yeah, your first radio show? Yeah, my first, actually it was 94. John Zito comes to my office. He was the owner of the clinic. He says to me, he goes, Gaz, I've got some good news for you. I just bought a radio show called WWNN. It was an all-motivation station. In it was the Florida. first one in the country. It's called WNN AM 90, 980. And it was the all motivation station. They had Brian Tracy, they had uh, Earl Nightingale, they had Zig Ziglar, and they had all these other natural doctors speaking. And he said, You're on in four hours. <laughs> know your material. What was the subject? That was my, it was about our clinic. And I picked up the microphone, took some notes, and I loved it. That was my first exposure to public radio. So we had a weekly radio show, and then after that, <clears throat> moving to Atlanta, we've had radio shows on and off. But really, my, my key to public speaking was just getting out there and knowing your subject like you talked about earlier. That's, yep. that's really yep. the key. Yeah. It's right. And knowing something about you, enough about your audience to know what they need and yep. where they want to go. I mean I my first because I was a not I was a neophyte, I would extemporize a lot and I realized that you have to be succinct and captivate the audience and know your subject like Joe's doing right now. Is that a Japanese camera or an Albanian camera? <laughs> <laughs> Certainly not a Serbian one. It's not, yeah. Serbian. not Serbian or Greek. <laughs> I tell you, he's Japanese. This thing, six hours worth of film. That thing's clear. amazing. It's amazing. It really is. Well, so you got your good practice there. Now, uh, talk for a minute about Progressive Medical Center. Integrative medicine is something you've had a passion for for a long time. Ever since I've known you, the idea that the patient has to be a partner in the health process, but the patient needs to know more about what is needed to keep them healthy. That's the well, problem. We haven't empowered people to really be full partners with doctors, and that's what's that's, important. That's a really good point. I think I think the my passion, and specifically think about passion, we're doing the Passion Driven Life event this weekend, that's the purpose of us. And thanks for inviting us today. I can't wait that, to speak to Progressive Medical was birthed with the idea that we're gonna provide the most advanced diagnostic evaluation, but adding the human touch, because a lot of doctors <clears throat> are very clinical. They don't speak the language mm -hmm. of lay people. They throw out these, these medical jargon words to, to, to their other colleagues, and they're not communicating effectively. Mm -hmm. And patients get scared. Doctors scare patients. Right. And when patients are in fear, that actually increases their disease process. Yeah, mind and, over and, matter. And this is why we feel that relaxation techniques and confidence, and I've met many, many, many physicians that believe that your mind can literally not only combat a disease, prevent a disease, Yes. but we've had many cancer patients that actually eradicated their disease by will, just by their attitude. enhancing their immune system because of their attitude. Yes. Now yes. we have something called psychovisual imagery developed by psychologists. I like that. Of, uh, I believe that. I believe that too, because it enhances your subconscious. Yeah. So progressive medical is scientifically based, evidence-based medicine, but we actually use the best modalities of each specialty. We use certain medications that are safe, we've tested them in the forms of bioidentical hormones. We're a big believer in bioidentical hormones if it's necessary. We also utilize naturopathy, which is actually looking at nature, herbology, it's a very specific scientific field. It's an art. It's a science. And you see a lot of doctors misinterpret medicine. They believe medicine's a science, but really it's an art. Yes. The founding father of medicine, Hippocrates, basically said, let your medicine be your food and your food be your medicine. We see medicine as a powerful tool because it can change your DNA. We have the technology now to actually stimulate your DNA. I just read a report today by Dr. Al Sears, he was talking specifically about glutathione.
Glutathione is a super antioxidant that your body produces at a young age, but as we age, we deplete glutathione, which is three amino acids, glycine, cysteine, and glutamic acid. If we miss one of those particular amino acids, because it's a very synergistic approach to have amino acids. Amino acids are the building blocks of the body. Uh -huh. With this glutathione, we found out now the people with the highest levels of glutathione, which by the way, Joe, yours were high, and that's why you don't look as old as you are, but I'm not gonna give your age out right now. Because <laughs> I'd be breaching patient confidentiality. What, what was high? Old. The combination? No, the glutathione. Yeah. And you think that's good? Isn't old anymore. That is that's good. good glutathione. Be oh, was that to be that old. test they took you said yes, to use then? yourself. Oh, that was the cellular. Yes, you scored the highest. It's amazing. So that's why. And, and, and I, that's why I think you're you know, I have a good long life. And I have smoked salmon every morning, and I can see Russia from my porch. <laughs> <laughs> good for your eyesight too but the, the point you're trying to make is if, 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 if people would pay attention to something like glutathione or they would pay attention see, these to are something things called alpha lipoic acid who, who would know well, about I this i take it every day so i see that's the thing who would who would know about well, this well, individuals that take an interest to read read and work at patients that take an interest to find an integrative natural well, that's doctor. why you're you're and, and these are all scientifically based. It's the, pharma medical it's the very pharmaceutical important. industry that wants you to believe that this is hocus pocus. Oh boy, their medicine, the dark, yeah. their medicine's hocus, hocus pocus. pocus. Yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah, no, you're right. So once we educate people on diagnostics and the importance of of testing your antioxidant levels, your vitamin levels, any toxicity, your hormones, they can live a long, healthy life. Pull up there a little bit, get some light. I want to just have a, another thought here before we. Is this Marta here? This is the Marta. And this is why our our branding statement at okay. Progressive is this is your life. Okay. Live it well. That's terrific. Because you only have one life and only one shot. Now I have a quaint. And if you can blow that shot, then you're not living life. I had Passionately. A quaint, I had a quaint thought because you and I have another connection. And you know that's our Albanian roots. Now you actually have uh, two Albanian parents. I think as I recall, you were born here in Detroit. Um, New Jersey, Hackensack. New Jersey, Don't raised disrespect in me, Hackensack. Hackensack, <laughs> and then raised in Detroit, and now you're, you're here in, after Florida, you're here in Atlanta. But you know what? My dad came from one of these ancient Albanian villages in ancient, well, at least the village was ancient. It was a Greek village back in the first millennium, but in 1480, 1461, it was given to George Castriati and his soldiers as kind of a reward. But the king of Naples had a very good thing in mind. He wanted security. He, he brought the Albanian soldiers there to help him repel the Lombards, the French. And he figured they would come back again because they were there in 1443, and again it was the Albanians who repelled them. So here my father now comes from those soldiers that were stranded in this village, Greci, since uh, 1461. And um, You have a strong lineage. It's strong lineage. Strong, but, strong but let's lineage. get back to medicine. Would you believe they practiced this herbal medicine? My dad, when he had a very bad cold or had a high fever, his mother used to take garlic, wrap it around his neck, and have olive oil on his chest. Right. I mean, they had their own ways of doing things. Well, it's interesting you mention that because... So maybe the Albanian, maybe your passion for this comes in part from instinctive roots roots that's a pun here but herbs in the sense that right. Albanians probably use this well, for you mentioned thousands that, of years you see I, I can isolate the chemicals in garlic garlic has a chemical called allicin allicin is antibacterial antimicrobial antifungal antiviral and the olive oil is a carrier it's a carrier ah, into the cell right so instinctively they knew this if you just take garlic and put it on you you're gonna smell like an Indian from Indian. That's a different subject, but it's right. not gonna work as effectively. You need the olive oil as go, a carrier. Right, to go into inside. the cell, like in your ear. Yeah. When you have an ear infection, you can do that. So there's, there's a lot of folk there's remedies a lot of that, stuff. that actually work, and there's a, there's a medical explanation why they work. You see, unfortunately, we live in a country where people want a quick fix, Joe. Yeah. They want no instant question. gratification. Yeah. They're right. They come to America, everything's based on convenience, convenience, convenience. But there's a price for that convenience. Yeah. And when you actually go to a doc in the box who doesn't know your history and prescribes an antibiotic, right. when you take that antibiotic, you're actually killing the infection, but you're also killing all of the microorganisms that God gave us. Right. You see, bacteria is symbiotic with us. We should live with bacteria because 90% of bacteria is actually right. beneficial. It's the bad bacteria, it's called opportunistic bacteria, that will destroy your immune system. Now, let me 
conclude this because uh, I'm going to put this out on our internet. This is an interview with an ethnic Albanian. Uh, Gez, why? 100% Albanian, by the way. 100%. I'm not. I'm not. Half you are. Uh, but stay right here because I'm going to miss. <laughs> if you turn around, I'm going to get. It's going to get too dark. Um, let me ask you this. You you have a passion not just for your family and not just for your work, uh, but you have a passion for your roots. You're one of the continuous supporters of what Shirley and I have been doing on the Albanian American Civic League. And uh, it's amazing to me that you still keep up with what we're doing in spite of all your activities. And you've got many of them down here. Family, and you're still supporting us. Thank you for your last very nice gift for the Public Affairs Committee because, as you know, we not only have to lobby, we got to support those who are supporting us. But what is it about you that you'd like to say in a few words, because I'm going to send this out to the Albanian community, and this is a good start for maybe profiling successful Albanian Americans, well, but why are you still so connected to your Albanian roots? Well, first of all, I'm proud to be part of the Albanian American Civic League with all the great work that you and Shirley have done. And it's an honor to be part of an Albanian movement because what's happening is, unfortunately, there's a dichotomy in the Albanian movement. You've got a lot of Albanians that are more concerned about their own success when really they're not looking at their legacy. Right. And I'm proud because my father and my mother came to this great country, the United States. I like to call it the un-United States of America now because each state has its own different agenda. but. The truth of the matter is I'm proud that my parents had the guts to come to this country not speaking the language, which most of your listeners have the very similar like story. Because I am first generation. Yeah, like me. And I was born here, but grew up in an Albanian household and had all my relatives, and, and obviously I'm proud of that. And I just want to keep our legacy strong, and we should be proud as Albanians, and we need to unite and there's an old saying, United States, which I believe that made our country great. United we stand, divided United we fall. Absolutely. So my message to my fellow Albanians in the United States is that let's stay united. Let's keep the mission. We need to support the Albanian American Civic League with Joe and Shirley. They've worked so hard, and we need to assist them, whether it's through donations, whether it's through lobbying, whether it's through getting other younger cousins that don't know the struggles right. of our forefathers and mothers and our aunts and uncles and our cousins because believe me we can lose our freedom as soon as we've gained it we can so we've got to continue strong with the message and i think it's important in the united states that that we have a voice in in washington and we need to continue that uh, because albania's not on the radar screen right now and and we can right. easily be just swept away but surely uh, and i have keeping it on the radar and, and that's why we have to support the Albanian American <laughs> Civic League. And you're going to get no. all these other factions of Albanians, and they're looking for their status. Right. And I'm not here to criticize. I'm here to let you know that we have a great opportunity in the United States. We do. And we, we do. need to use our, our voice in government, truth in government. And the only way we're going to do that, Joe, is by continuing to, to uniting us. That's and, true. and what hurts me is to see all this division. And uh, we fought too hard for this freedom, and we, we can't, and we, we, we can't we've got, let go. We've got too much that we've built as a strong foundation to let go now. We've got to complete building the house. And to Shirley and me, that means the Albanian national cause, to get more respect for who we are as people. We may not be all in one state anymore, but there's 7 million Albanians living side by side, contiguously on their ancient lands, speaking the same language, with the same history. And uh, now that we got an independent Kosovo, that's one building block, a democratic Albania, another building block. we got to worry about the Albanians in Presheva, Macedonia, northern Greece, especially, Chamria, but Albanians all over Greece, the Arvanites, and in Montenegro. One last thought. But there's still a lot of work to do. A lot of work. But and I'll tell you, for those. But we're on our way. If we didn't start, we'd be nowhere right now. And I'll tell you, the, what, what keeps you asked me the question as, as an uh, American Albanian, what keeps me going is the fact that my father came from the great Albanian people and he left at the age of 11. He left because he knew that freedom was a price to pay. And he knew that he didn't want to compromise his family and poker debts. They actually live in a little village called Zervask. And the communist regime was ruthless, they took advantage, and they put fear in the local people. And he knew at such a young age with his cousins, and he never had an opportunity to see his family again, ever. Wow. 
Unfortunately, he passed away, so he didn't have an opportunity to see Albania free again. So those of you that took that for granted, I just want to leave you a message that freedom always has a price. Right. And if we can continue to work hard, Split we'll never lose bit. our freedom again. Right. So that's why I'm proud to be an American Albanian, and I'm proud to serve on the board and to help Joe and Shirley with their mission. And that's why you need to do the same thing. Terrific. One last thought. You brought us to your house, Albanian style. Instead of going out to dinner at a fancy restaurant in Atlanta, we were there with your wife, Donna, who cooked a wonderful meal. A lot of organic stuff, so you're practicing what you preach. And your kids were there. I haven't seen your kids now in almost 10 years, but I was happy to see uh, your daughter and two sons. Now, one of the things that struck me was when they were describing this phenomenal trip you just took back to the homeland, you took them to Albania. And I hadn't known that. Your, your, your son told me, I guess it was uh, Jordan, he said, you know what, it was really something hearing dad speak that Albanian language to the people there that he was kind of standing on the sidelines hearing you speak the old language. And uh, that's, uh, you know, really, really interesting. So let's conclude by saying a few words in Albanian. I always like to tell the Albanians, don't forget, uh, I wasn't raised speaking Albanian fluently. When I was a kid, we were with my Albanian grandmother in the Bronx till I was six. So I know the words, you know, to eat ha, hair is lesh. Uh, I knew what it meant to, to go to the bathroom. <laughs> I won't repeat the <laughs> All words. The words. All right. I can say but, is... But uh, I always say to them before I leave, Unyam Kana Chayam Chiptaro Amerikan. Unyam Shum Kana Chayam Gazima Gulli. Falem Dilet Shum Zot Nidia Gardi. And Dieter Nemir. And, you know, it's interesting you mentioned, because I would only That's speak great. Albanian with my father. Yeah. And he's unfortunately passed away for 23 years, and I just speak with my mother occasionally. So and you still speak, you still well, have no, fluency. Well, I speak with my mother, but the, the, the problem is we're living here, and my yes. message also to the parents that want to keep Albanian going, you got to keep it strong because the kids will be resisted, like I was. Right. But it's in your subconscious, and when yes. I go back to Albania, it comes back fluently. Great. Thank you, guys. This okay, is wonderful. Thank, Thank you for driving us. We're now going into Atlanta to see that great aquarium. Yes. Thank you. On that note, was I good enough?